past history to make future predictions. Um, we're very, very... Uh, look, every, every tragedy, uh, every death that's happened uh, during this event, whether it's the tragedy of this morning uh, or when it was during the rain event, uh, there were people washed over causeways. They're all terrible tragedies. But, look, we're just grateful there hasn't been more. Um, and uh, I think it's important for all of us, uh, uh, particularly the media, and we're thankful for that, to get that message out around the dangers uh, that are involved in entering flooded waters. But, uh, look, they're all tragedies, and uh, our efforts are really focused on preventing any more. What's the food situation like? I know you talked about Rockhampton being cut off and, and other towns being cut off for some time, and I know there was, there was the effort to get food there. What's that looking like now? Uh, we've just been in a phone hookup with all the uh, local disaster groups. Uh, issues of resupply in all the affected areas are progressing well. Uh, Rockhampton, of course, was a uh, major issue for us, but thankfully we had sufficient time in between when the Yepin crossing uh, closed uh, to uh, restock and resupply uh, Rockhampton. Uh, one of the issues is uh, that uh, the peak in Rockhampton and some of the other towns uh, uh, will remain quite high. We're expecting, um, uh, you know, Rockhampton, the Fitzroy in Rockhampton, to subside very slowly, and we could have a couple of weeks uh, where where uh, Rockhampton is uh, fully or partially isolated. So there's a lot of planning going around uh, resupply. Uh, thankfully, uh, issues around water and sewage in Rockhampton uh, are fine. Um, most towns are reporting. Uh, some isolated uh, losses of uh, power. Uh, however, uh, the efforts there with Energex and Ergon, uh, incredible really, they're, they're getting in and getting power back on very quickly. So uh, certainly this morning's briefing from all the affected areas, uh, the issue of resupply uh, seems to be well in hand. With the, with the Boulogne River swelling, are you concerned for St George and Surratt and how they'll be affected by the floods? Absolutely, uh, certainly. Um, uh, St George and Surratt on the Boulogne. Uh, there's a watching brief on those. Uh, there's some suggestions that uh, uh, that St George uh, could reach uh, peaks uh, to, I think it was March in 2010, the last flood, and certainly Surratt. Um, some of the modelling is indicating that it could be, uh, you know, the river could peak at record levels. Um, the local groups there are, have got the situation well in hand and are thinking through all contingencies, but certainly as uh, those waters move down through the catchment, uh, they're certainly uh, towns that we've uh, got a very close watch on. Do you think residents there are better prepared because they've just had that recent experience? Uh, look, I'm sure. I'm sure that the, uh, the experience, this is very much a statewide event. Uh, all the local disaster groups uh, certainly uh, talk uh, each day. Uh, we have a phone hook-up each day with all of them, and I'm, and I'm sure we're all learning off each other, uh, lessons learnt uh, as the event unfolds. Uh, what is clear from the briefing is that the, all those uh, affected communities have the situation well in hand. They're thinking through contingencies. Should there be a need to evacuate? They're thinking through issues uh, around uh, restocking and food and water and, and all those types of things. So uh, uh, we've been extremely uh, impressed, I guess, at the resilience of those smaller communities and how they're banding together to, uh, to deal with this um, disaster. How many people have been displaced altogether and how many people in emergency accommodation, you know, across all regions? Uh, I think, roughly speaking, uh, there's probably a 1,000 people. We've got exact uh, figures that I can provide to you on that uh, by town. And, of course, uh, not all people that are registered in an evacuation uh, centre stay there every night. Um, but we can provide that to you, but roughly about a 1,000 people are in uh, evacuation centres uh, around Queensland. And the amount of land affected, is that? There was one quote that it was the size of New South Wales, is that right? That's right, and, uh, you know, we have some huge catchment areas in Queensland. The catchment area for the Fitzroy itself is 150,000 square kilometres, but uh, certainly uh, uh, that uh, analogy has been drawn that the, the flood-affected area is as big as New South Wales. Just in terms of Surratt, if the geography serves me correctly, it, Surratt is sort of the next in line for getting the water that's gone through Chinchilla in the Condamine system, and what they're feeling at the moment is um, water from the Warrego system, I think, is so, which means it's almost at the confluence of two lots of water coming through, which means that Surratt must be in a bit of a precarious situation at the moment. Would that be right? Uh, the uh 
Every day we uh, talk to the Bureau of Meteorology, uh, particularly the area of hydrology. They have quite sophisticated modelling uh, that factors all the water uh, that's entering the catchment area and um, uh, they brief us constantly during the day. Uh, uh, Surat uh, is, is certainly an area to watch and um, you know, uh, the local community there through the local disaster group is planning, uh, depending on how that modelling changes over the ensuing week, they are planning for all contingencies. But yes, it's a very, very widespread uh, flood and we're seeing towns uh, uh, with unprecedented levels uh, in terms of river height. Look, I haven't heard any, uh, any issues around sandbags, uh, but we'd be happy to talk to you after the conference uh, if you had any particular questions around uh, particular uh, locations. And you said no reports of looting so far? That's correct, yeah. We, we've uh, been in contact with all our local groups this morning. Uh, that's one of the areas we're particularly uh, concerned about as people return to their dwellings and, and start to uh, place their uh, goods out to dry. It's, it's one to watch. Uh, uh, we'd like to get the message out there that we have put additional police resources into all of these towns. Uh, they're actively uh, patrolling um, um, uh, the streets as the floodwaters subside. Uh, thankfully, we haven't had any confirmed reports to date. How many people have, how many extra police, sorry, have been deployed to Theodore and Condamine? Uh, we'd be able to give you... That's constantly changing. Um, the first lot of... We put an extra four police into uh, uh, Theodore to start with, then an extra five into Condamine. Um, Naturally, uh, there wasn't a lot of... Uh, both of those towns were completely uh, uh, evacuated, but that's changing on a daily basis. Uh, we're managing the issues of fatigue as well uh, across the whole area of emergency services workers. And this is likely to be a, a very protracted event, uh, perhaps for another month, uh, as waters subside, but those numbers are, are, uh, are changing all the time. But uh, the, the issue of uh, police numbers into those towns... Uh, you know, it's changed daily based on, on the needs. So what are the areas being patrolled for looting at the moment? Well, well all towns, uh, they're not necessarily being patrolled specifically for looting. They're being, the police deployed into those areas are, are doing emergency response, emergency rescue work. They're also actively patrolling to make sure that people's properties are uh, uh, secure. Do you have any idea of how many people are involved in the rescue effort in terms of like people here? Uh, on the ground, police, SES, you know, the whole, the whole lot. Do I, don't, I don't have a figure. It would be literally thousands of people. And, and what we're seeing in local communities through with the SES uh, in particular, uh, that people are chipping in to help. Whole communities are sort of mobilising, particularly in that uh, uh, recovery uh, stage where people are helping each other clean their houses and uh, uh, providing each other with support. And I think this is one of the things that makes... Uh, uh, Queensland's such a great place is uh, the fact that people do chip in and help each other when times are tough. And we're seeing some wonderful reports all around the state how that's happening. In terms of major inundation and evacuations, would you say at this point the worst is behind us? Uh, look, I, I, I think it's very hard to make that call um, uh, because it's a unique event. We're seeing uh, parts of the state are still in response mode while others move into recovery mode. I think we're very much in the middle of the event. Uh, uh, you know, it won't be until waters recede where we can actually uh, gauge the damage to uh, public infrastructure, roads and bridges. So I think uh, we're very much... Uh, the event's still a long way to go. Any idea of the damage, Bill? Uh, no, I, I think uh, that's an unknown and, and we certainly won't have any clarity on that uh, until floodwaters uh, fully uh, recede. With the flooding set to continue for about a month um, and you were speaking about fatigue and are there plans in place um, to request um, backup support from other states or what's um, happening with that? Yep. Thank you. Uh, I can answer that. Sorry, what's your name? My name's Warren Britson. I'm the Acting Assistant Director General for Emergency Management Queensland and the SES is part of our management structure. Yes, we have uh, State Emergency Service personnel from Queensland assisted Victoria, as you may recall, last year in some floods. Um, so they were very generous to offer their assistance as well. So we're bringing some teams up from Victoria to assist in our emergency operations centres, particularly at Emerald and also here in the State Centre. Uh, there's some people coming from New South Wales, some what we call flood experts in the State Emergency Service, and they're going to be deployed into Rockhampton and here as well. 
internally we're moving lots of uh, state emergency service volunteers into the areas affected from obviously those areas not affected. We're bringing, for instance, 40 personnel out of Cairns. They're heading towards Emerald now, and we've already flown them yesterday into Rockhampton. There's about 20 personnel going from the Sunshine Coast up into Bundaberg, and the list goes on. So we're moving people internally to assist those people who need help, but more importantly, we're into fatigue management now with our volunteers. They've been at this since before Christmas, non-stop. So we're also putting people in there now just to give others a rest. Uh, what's the size of con the contingent coming up from New South Wales? It's only quite small. It's only five uh, emergency management team experts and from flood Victoria? expert. No, no, from New South Wales. Oh, yeah. And there's about ten from Victoria coming. But they're on standby to give us more. Bearing in mind, of course, New South Wales is uh, affected by flooding as well. Uh, we were just outside and spoke with the police minister who said there were 40 from Victoria and 20 from New South Wales. Is that... That's the figures being spoken about, but we're taking them in, in uh, I guess, small chunks. We're bringing five people forward, as I spoke about, and there's others on waiting lists, and we can get them if necessary. Okay, yes. so at this stage, this is what you've received. But That's correct. Okay. Yes. What's the current situation with electricity in Emerald and Northampton? How long will that be out for? How many homes affected you? Any idea? I, I think... Emerald, certainly the report this morning is that uh, power is back on, but there's always pockets uh, uh, that are not on. As uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of times houses and businesses have to be inspected before you can turn it back on. So the service out there is patchy, but as uh, the floodwaters recede and uh, electrical engineers uh, make places safe, um, that power is getting turned back on. Just quickly, do you perceive any major public health issues with this? Because you've got mozzies and sand flies and, and sewerage and all that sort of stuff. Is, is, is there any particular um, major health issue that's problematic? There's certainly nothing emerging, but it's certainly very much a watching brief. Um, uh, health uh, contribute to our, our briefings during, our, the, during the day. Uh, thankfully, uh, uh, we haven't had any issues with water contamination, etc. That's been managed very well. Uh, also, thankfully... Where hospitals have been taken offline, uh, local clinics have been able to be established and uh, and resourced. Uh, the issue of of uh, mosquitoes and etc. is an issue, and uh, part of resupply is is to provide um, you know uh, air guard etc. So it, it is a key issue. It's something that's raised every day as part of the watching brief. But certainly at the moment, uh, nothing's emerged as a major issue. When you said it's going to go on for another month, you mean areas in part <coughs> flood affected? your involvement for another month with the centre? Uh, very much, I would think so, particularly with recovery. Rockhampton, for example, is expecting to um, hold... Uh, you know, the waters will recede there very slowly and may hold near to its peak uh, till mid-January. And then you've got the, uh, the very, very onerous uh, work of recovery. Uh, so uh, uh, how quickly um, communities respond... Uh, to recovery is an unknown. It could take, uh, but I'd expect we'll still be uh, very much in recovery mode uh, as we move into the beginning of February. Any date for the reopening of the Rocky Airport? No, very, mu very much. Uh, that's a, that is an issue. Uh, I think we could expect uh, certainly closures for at least another week. Uh, we'll do some more modelling on that with uh, the Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, because of the extent of the flooding, um, as I said, the Fitzroy River Catchment area is 150,000 square kilometres. Uh, the waters in Rockhampton are expected to recede very slowly. Uh, but one thing's for certain, as soon as it's possible to reopen it, it will be reopened. There's reports that um, the road north of uh, Rockhampton to Mackay uh, has water lapping on it, the highway, um, today. Um, are police expecting to, to close that off at some stage shortly? Uh, we're keeping a very, very close eye on that. Uh, it is still open at the moment. We were advised just prior to this meeting. Uh, and I believe from memory it was about 0.9 of a metre uh, below the road. So my understanding is that that, uh, that road is still open. But once again, it's uh, so important to ask people to plan any essential travel and to consult uh, uh, both the RACQ website and the uh, 13 19, 40 website for up-to-date uh, uh, road closure information. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, some good questions around.